Hi everybody, Josiah here, also known as Chilling Silence, and following on from the last video, I've had a little bit of a chat with Stuart from Lifehash, and I wanted to kind of go over a couple of things today because I've had a few questions about it and about what they are all about. So what I'm going to do is bring up the screen here, and we're having a look on their website. What we're going to do is we'll go up to Industries up here, and we'll take a quick look, because this is what they were talking about in their announcement, at the insurance one. Now... Really cool here, uh, manage fraud, build trust, and improve customer experience. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go through and read their interactive white paper. Now, I would encourage you to go through and put your own details in there because obviously they're gonna wanna be able to catch up with you as an end user, I suppose, and let you know, send you an email, I'm guessing when there's an announcement, like, I presume that's why they're asking for. Uh, but anyway, so what we'll do is we'll pop my details in here, and thanks to the magic of post-production editing, Right, so here we have their interactive white paper. Can I click on this? A new approach. It looks like a button I'm supposed to be able to click on, but I'm guessing I kind of scroll through it. Fraud accounts for 10% of premiums. Okay. The cost of insurance fraud for at least... Okay, so the theory is if a company were utilizing this kind of uh, a, a platform and a product with Lifehash, then you might be able to either pass it on to the customer or it's going to be better for the insurer. I mean, that sounds pretty cool. 10% is it's pretty huge if you can get rid of most of it. A constant fight against fraud. It's so prevalent worldwide that it's not surprising. In 2018, the UK car industry alone had accounted for 55,000 claims worth of... Holy moly, that's a lot of money. Are those 55,000 all fraudulent? Surely that's got to be the fraudulent claims alone, let alone their normal stuff uh ensuring expensive objects such as luxury items opens the door to false claims in damage loss yeah that's true okay um i mean so far so good dealing with trust fraud is a considerable challenge to the insurer and it is not the only challenge faced in the industry right yes 27 percent of consumers consider the insurers to be trustworthy <laughs> yeah I mean, that wouldn't surprise me. Found that 11% of people have strong trust in insurance agents and brokers. Yeah, okay. Ah, right. I see what they're what they're showing here is if you're, like, taking... If you're taking a short photo or a video of it and then you look up, you're actually, like... You know, you're, you're basically saying, yeah, I own this picture, but then you look up and you're in a... In a, um... Art gallery? I'm guessing? I'm guessing that's what they're going with here. Yeah, because at first glance, it looks like it's all legit. And you're like, oh, I'm actually in an art gallery. Unless someone's home looks like that, which would actually be a freaking cool home. Uh, innovation creates possibilities. Digital transformation has opened the doors in the insurance industry. Unimaginable 20 years ago. <laughs> mobile applications. Here we go. Okay, this is what I'm really interested in. Is there mobile application? Analytics, blockchain technologies. Okay. Um, it doesn't really say much about it. It's a nice, pretty little video that's just a pretty little video, I guess. Uh, democratization of artificial intelligence, the future of... Okay. Microsoft, Salesforce, and Amazon, and countless others have made it their mission to empower society with artificial intelligence, infusing applications with AI, such as intelligent typing tools or even AI-assisted app development, has caused the adoption of AI to soar by 50%. Okay, cool. So they're hoping to have some kind of, like, AI from the sounds of it, but they haven't specifically, like, mentioned how it's going to tie in here. While it may improve productivity and help make valuable predictions, it raises a significant discussion around data ownership, transparency, privacy, and security. And I think that this is something that they're really going to be focusing on. It sounds, I like, I like where they're kind of, they're taking you basically on, like, a bit of a journey with this whole thing. The dawn of blockchain. <laughs> Blockchain technology has undoubtedly raised heads in boardrooms. Yeah. Um, despite that, most executives, 87%, believe that distributed ledger technology will enable new business functionalities and revenue streams in their industry, and not without good reason. Yeah, I mean, think about that. So they're, they're specifically, they're talking about the fact that 10% of insurance claims are fraudulent. That's a huge amount of revenue. What was it, 660 million pounds or something? Like, in one year alone, that is a huge saving for them. Um, blockchain can provide users with unprecedented ownership over their data with the potential for consumers and companies to take something in the real world and digitally remember it forever in a transparent way. In essence, we see that blockchain can step in where AI comes up short. 
knew they were taking us on like this nice little journey. I knew it. There we go. Okay, this is cool. Let's see what else we got. A two-sided market. Okay, so giving us some, some benefits and things. This is cool. A blockchain solution provides what people are looking for, an objective version of the truth that both insurers and consumers can fall back on, which is really, really important. So one of the things with my recent motorbike accident is that I was unable to prove that I was wearing jeans at the time previously and it's... <laughs> And, and same for my shoes. Now, I've, I sent them a photograph of me literally lying in the ditch in a pool of petrol and oil with the fire department having, like, cut my jeans kind of thing to to check me out and stuff and see where, like, my knee was popped out. It was all gory. And really good fun, though. Um, but that's one of the difficulties if you are an insurer as well as being a consumer is proving that ownership and both of you having what is an agreed upon record um so this is quite cool um let's keep going on because we've got a little bit to get through creating a single source of truth oh yeah so the 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 app and the solution is going to be this source of truth a large part of improving the journey of insured assets focuses on fraud detection while that addresses many fraudulent activities, it doesn't promote transparency and can even harm your customer relationship. Which is true. This is what exactly happened with me, is I had to basically count on the fact that my brother had previously taken a photograph of me on my bike while we were sitting at the traffic lights. There's one photo of me wearing those same jeans and those same shoes. And I'm just really, really lucky that my brother had taken that photo and he had it on his phone. Otherwise, the insurer was basically going to go, no, you didn't actually have those shoes. Like, we're not we're not reimbursing you for them. Life hash. Oh, they've got a picture of the app here. Cool. John Hill. They should make that Jonah Hill. That's kind of the first thing that comes to mind there. <laughs> a claims app with a focus on transparency and provenance. So with a blockchain solution such as LifeHash Insurance, so this is life. This is just one part of like an overall ecosystem that's being developed from what I understand. So LifeHash Insurance, customers will be able to report incidents in real time. In addition, they'll have the ability to record relevant data to the blockchain by taking pictures and filing a report. Now, how cool would that have been if I was in the accident and the people that were around me, because we had like five different cars all stop, if they'd been able to effectively kind of like pull their resources and file this claim or participate in this claim and give their story and their version of events right there and then as we've got these five people showing up and the police took another like 15 minutes or something along those lines, how cool would that have been with this kind of an app? I think that's awesome. These processes are completed live at location of an... Ah, so that's exactly what they're talking about. These processes are completed live at the location of an incident, limiting the potential for fraud drastically, reducing the number of fraud investigations, and saving the valuable time of agents working to confirm incidents. Oh, that sounds so cool. Um, oh, cool. We've got some of the photos that they've shown like on the website and stuff. How did I get that? My photo just... My, my cursor zoomed in for a second there. Oh, that's just Mac OS being silly. Never mind. I thought that was the interactive white paper. The benefits of blockchain, creating a single source of truth, immutability, and forever, providing undeniable provenance, publicly audited with complete data privacy. Now, I think the data privacy thing is actually going to play in a large part of it here, because if you are a consumer, and you're going around and you're taking a bunch of photos and things, right, you're not going to want every Tom, Dick, and Harry seeing that. You're not specifically going to want even, like, the insurer, like, going through your house just because, you know, they don't, they don't need to even though they're insuring it up until the point in which you need to make a claim. So I think that's going to play a bit of a role in it there. Uh, the benefits of our solution. Uh, for customers providing condition of an item at any time. That's cool. So they're showing you taking like a video of a watch here. I'm guessing they're going to do something like over time with it. Maybe with like cars because they're still... They're talking about insuring cars as well. So maybe they're talking about like has your car been in an accident before the accident or something like that. I, I don't know. Optimize claim process and increase reporting speed. Yeah, heck yeah, let's go back really quickly to that app, right? Like, so start a claim, select claim category, you're making model of your car and stuff. Like, all of this would exponentially speed up all of these kind of things. Lodging of a claim and stuff. And for me as an end consumer, that's what I care about. Like, I was, I was basically bedridden for effectively like seven, eight weeks. Like, it's difficult to get up and try and sit down and fill out this damn form, whereas if I can lie on my back with, with an app, right? Like, if I've got my phone... <laughs> it's all about me. It's not... I, like, I don't really care about anything else. It's all about how this can benefit me at this point. 
for insurers, improved incident uh, reporting reduces staff costs. Yeah, that's going to be true. Uh, definitive item condition allows for accurate comparison. Now, that's also going to be a huge point of savings because if you've had an item, for example, like my motorbike, and I've had it now for like two years or something like that, they're going to want to know, was it in an original condition? Had you previously like semi like bend the bike or something and it was in a bad you know like that kind of thing single source of truth combats fraud i think this is going to be really big as well and hopefully as a result of this not only will there be time savings like huge time savings potentially here but also the the potential for end users to be able to save a little bit of money if you're using this kind of thing like how freaking cool would that be if your insurance company says to you if you're using this app you're going to save five percent of your premiums hell yeah i'm doing it straight away in a heartbeat because that's an extra you know, like 50 bucks a year, and I've got a much better place, like, I'm storing all of my stuff, like, that sounds awesome. Incident and damage reporting, utilizing photos, videos, voice text, and locations. So locations, I have a feeling they're going to want to be, like, this is, I'm guessing, the whole privacy aspect, right? Like, tying in, like, they're not going to want to be tracking you, and so I think that's going to be quite important, the, the privacy aspect that they've previously alluded to. Uh, prove the condition of insured items by checking them in with life hash. Yeah, that's going to be cool. Quote according to condition. Right, so if you've got a, a vehicle, and let's say your vehicle is 10 years old, but it's basically it's got like very low mileage and things like that, you're going to be able to get a fair insurance quote and be covered for the fact that your, your vehicle is 10 years old but has really low mileage. It's in perfect condition. It was driven by, you know, like one grandma you see on all the Trade Me in New Zealand or eBay listings, right? Like one, one old lady owner who barely took it out of her garage, that kind of thing. I'd imagine that you'd be able to get a better quote for it if it was in better condition or if you have um, bought something that's a bit of a doer-upper, then you'll get cheaper, you know, coverage. Um, secure evidence early by providing first responders and insurance investigators life. Oh, okay. We need to find out more about this. So this is something. Or first responders and insurance investigators life hash enabled measuring solutions. Life hash enabled. I wonder if this is going to potentially uh, be relevant to the app as well. Like, so if you are, for example, if you're a, the fireman showed up to my accident, first of all. Are they going to potentially be able to contribute to the insurance claim by basically saying, yeah, we were here first and we found him literally lying in the ditch. There was five people over there, you know, like that kind of thing. I don't know. Um, would like to hear more about that. Customizable to specific industry challenges such as speciality insurance. Right. So certain things like if you're insuring artwork are going to be more, uh, they're going to have different things compared to if you are insuring a vehicle. Because if you're insuring artwork... It doesn't matter, like, you're not going to have a, a second opinion, I suppose, like, in terms of, like, how an accident happened. Did, did little Timmy spill something over your $100,000 piece of artwork? Or were you in an accident, and you were turning left, and someone else was turning right, and, you know, like, you're going to have that kind of different thing. So it sounds like they're, they're thinking ahead a bit there, which is pretty cool. Yeah, okay, your insurance history, book a meeting. I'm not going to book a meeting right now, but this is kind of, this is cool. It's been a little bit of, like, an introduction potentially more so than like an interactive like white paper it's it's been really good telling you a little bit about some of the history and things like that so i'm uh, i'm definitely excited yeah i'm i'm definitely excited and if you want to go and check that out go to industries and i would encourage you to go down you've got insurance actually we t we've oh yeah okay cool cool one of the other things, though, moving on, is the Digibyte beanie. So I got this recently from CryptiShop.com and rocking it out today as well as a t-shirt. Just thought I'd put that out there, too, because it's pretty cool. Uh, you can head along to CryptiShop.com if you are interested in them. Hello, Matthew. I'm doing a pre-recorded video. Ah. Yeah. Did you just hold it? No, but I'll, I'm going to edit it in, in post-production. Moving on, though, to the Digibyte project and what we're doing with Digibyte version. Actually, I need to go. What we're doing with this is this specifically. I'll scroll down and skip all of the, the stuff from beforehand. Here, the Digibyte version 8 development. What we're doing is we are fundraising for this part, finishing 0 0.21. Right there. 
With working unit tests, the dandelion changes implemented, a pull request made. This is what the donations that we are taking are for. Now, Barry's already gone and taken some of that and cashed a little bit out so that he can obviously pay some bills and things. Um, I, I had a chat with him about that. He asked if that was cool. I'm like, yeah, it's we're literally donating to your wallet for you to do whatever the hell you want with, so go for it. It makes sense for you to take it out at a known amount and things, so yeah, good on him. Um, he says uh, a really big thank you, obviously, um, which is, you know, cool. Um we have already raised a significant amount. I think we're somewhere in the vicinity of like 70,000 Digibyte. Uh, I'd like to still see us keep going. Maybe we go to like 100, maybe we go to like 125,000. I'm really not too sure. Um, either way, he's already started um, and has been making progress on it, which is quite important. Uh, and we're, we're not about to get to kind of like a week or two down the line and he's gonna go mm, not gonna carry on because we only got 70,000 Digibyte, you know, so um, I would encourage us to, to carry on um, donating to that. He has started a Digibyte dash project slash info here. So in this info repository, he's made a bunch of details about specifically like where some of this development has been. Got a bunch of the previous branches and things like that from like earlier work and things. So Prog Pal, Random X, some of the earlier stuff for 8.20 earlier uh, worked on an 8, on 0.21. He's basically going back and redoing it to be completely. Um, I guess basically once you've done it once, well, twice or three times, whatever, um, it's more of a case of he knows a lot more about what to look out for and is going to be redoing things in a slightly more streamlined and optimized manner. And this is going to be in keeping, obviously, in with the development process, which I talk about here. What, over the coming weeks, as this is finished off, preparation we've made for a pull request against the existing Digibyte repos gets reviewed, ra di ra di ra So that'll be exciting. Following this pull request, the other Digibyte reviewers will then be able to not only provide feedback, amendments, and other suggestions, but further tweaks, improvements, and all of that kind of good stuff. So, uh, if you are curious, if you want to go and check out some of the work that's already been done, you can go to digibyte-project slash info. We've got some of the details here. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to talk about really briefly is he's decided that, um, well, actually, he asked me, he said, you know, what, what do you think about a, a, a code name? And kind of came up with the codename of Dinkum. It is an Australian slang word. Um, really, truly, honestly. But also, actually, can we scroll down? What does the Australian slang term for fair Dinkum mean? Uh, unquestionably good or genuine. Excellent. Often used as a general expression of these cigars are fair Dinkum. Oh, okay, yeah. Right, so if something is fair dinkum, it's basically, it's really, really good. And that's what we're doing with this release. We want to make it really, really good. Um, plus, he's Australian. He said some other stuff as well, some other kind of cobbler something. I don't know, but Australian slang, whatever. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, um, we're looking to call it the dinkum release. We're going to wrap it up there, though. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, it's just going to be a code name, though, so keep that in mind as part of version 8. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the share button. You can reach me in the comment section below if you do have any questions. You can hit me on Twitter. Or as we've previously mentioned as well, you can join the development discussion on gitter.im2. Otherwise, I'll talk to you in the next video, and we'll see you soon. Cheers.